think generosity is being grateful for what you have, being willing to share it with others, with a heart of love and kindness. Generosity is when you give willingly without being frustrated about it. It means to share what you have with other people and to show them that you care about them. You give for your whole life and you look for ways to help people. Generous means kind. Yeah, it means you have a big, big heart. Generous, it means to um, give somebody something or give God something that is important to you with a grateful heart. You can be generous by giving a gift or even just spending time with somebody. When you're generous, you should feel like happy and joyful. When I am generous, my heart feels joyful. You can be generous by um, with your brother by if he's sick, you can you can make him a poster. The poster would say, "I hope you feel better." I help my family by setting the table. My grandma and grandpa have a farm, so I could help them take care of their horses. If my little sister was hurt, I would go tell my parents and go get some, a cotton ball and and a band aid. I can help my friends by making them joyful and happy and forgive others and believe in Jesus. I can help a friend by giving them a hug. You can give them a hug and, or, share, or share your toy. By helping my sister go for a walk with my neighbor. I help my neighbor by giving them cookies. I could bring food to them or bring them something to drink if they don't have it. I can help my church by giving money to the poor. I help my church by listening to the teachers. By setting an example of what it means to be a follower in Christ. I can help my church by giving money for Kainos so they can like make it bigger and help the community. Even in any situation you are, you can be generous. Generosity is giving to others, sharing what God has given us. I really like to help. I help my family by watching my little brother. He is a handful. I think generosity means to not expecting something in return when you give something to someone else. I feel like I'm giving $150 but not getting it back because um, I believe this is going to the things that are helping the church. Every single one of you can give like money. It might not have to be $150. It could be two or two thousand or two hundred for kainos. It means new, right? So you should be new in what you do. I love that last line. Kainos means new, so you should be new in what you do. And that's really what we've been after. We've been after the heart. We've been after our hearts being new before the Lord and saying, God, what do you want to do through us? How do you want to move? What do you want to do in our generosity? And we've been discussing that, looking at David and Solomon building the temple. So if you got your Bible, I want you to turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. So on one knee, you got your Bible at 1 Chronicles chapter 29. And then on your other knee, you got your Kainos book that is on page 98, so you can take some notes, but it's going to take me just a little bit of time to get to the scripture. So don't worry, I'm getting there. But I want to make sure that we understand where we're going and what we're doing as we jump in talking about kainos. Kainos is the Greek word for new. It's an awesome word that we've learned and grown to love. And we've been able to celebrate that great word. And kainos is basically that we are raising resources to make a kingdom impact. Now, here's what we're doing. We've got three different buckets, and these three different buckets are commission, community, and compassion. I want you to say that with me, all campuses, digital family online as well. Say it with me, one, two, three. Commission, community, compassion. Commission, community, and compassion. Our commission is our operating budget. It is for two years. Kainos is two years, and it's one fund altogether. That's our operating budget. 
31.5 million for a year, another 31.5, that's $63 million. So when we're talking about giving today in our commitment card, we're not talking about the extra that you're gonna give just to Kainos. Kainos is all of our giving for two years, all of our tithes, all of our offerings, everything that we're giving for the next two years. So the commission is what we're already doing. We didn't wanna just do a, a two fund where we got the budget over here and we got everything else over here and everybody goes, yeah, and then we forget about what we're already doing. It's one thing together. And so that's where we're gonna keep doing the great ministry that we're already doing. But then our community section, we're going to, our goal is $20 million that we're gonna invest in our community. We're gonna be able to do some great things in the Siena campus, at the Loop campus, downtown, Cypress as well, Digital Family, a big upgrade with that as well. And that'll be about $20 million. That is all in your book we've been talking about the last five weeks. Then compassion. We wanna give missionally as well. Everything we do is on mission. But in compassion, do you know that we're gonna help build a building in Africa for special needs kids? We're gonna translate the scripture into languages that they've never had a Bible before in their language. We're gonna encourage ministry or missionaries. We're gonna encourage adoption families and help with adoption. We're gonna have Difference Maker Ventures, which is an arm of our church that's gonna help to birth brand new ministries that are gonna reach out. So the commission is our budget over two years, 63 million, then community of 20 million, then compassion of 10 million, that's $93 million. So when we get to our time in the commitment card at the end of the message, when we're talking about, we're talking about everything we're given, our tithes and our gifts and everything we're given over these next two years for these kingdom resources to make a huge, huge difference. It's going to be so exciting. It's going to be so special. It's gonna be amazing to be able to see all of these things taking place. Kainos, something new. Now also just in way of review, these are some of the things we've been saying. It's about the heart. We're not talking about money. We're talking about our hearts. We don't give to a church. We've been saying that we give through a church. So you're not giving to an entity. You're just giving through this entity to make a difference in different places. We said that God's hand follows God's heart. We said that it will take all of us. I'll show you that in the scripture in just a second. We have been talking about what prevents us oftentimes of being generous, we're willing, but what prevents us is our debt, our doubt and our defensiveness. We just throw up all these defenses and we doubt that God can really provide or we've gotten ourselves into a hole and we feel like we gotta get ourselves out of it. And then lastly, that generosity is something God wants for us, not from us. We've been talking about these things for the last five weeks. God wants something for us in our generosity, not some, something from us. Now look in your scripture into 1 Chronicles chapter 29, beginning in verse 20. David has been helping Solomon build the temple. They've been giving, and now we're seeing this continue on. Look at verse 20. It says this, Then David said to the whole assembly, I want you to say with me on the count of three, whole assembly. One, two, three, whole assembly. David said to the whole assembly, blessed be the Lord your God. So the whole assembly, he says it again, praise the Lord of their ancestors. And they knelt low and paid homage to the Lord and King. We'll get to 21 in just a second, but let's start there with verse 20. I want to give you the title of my message is time to party, okay? We have a time to party. And what is that? That means we're cheerful givers. This is a party day. We get to be a part of something eternal as temporary people. This is a time to party. Also, we're redeeming the word party, okay, is what we're doing as well. I'm gonna give you five things for an awesome Christian party. The first thing I want you to hear is this. It was in that first verse, mutual sacrifice of the whole assembly, 100% participation. If you wanna see an overview of our goals, we basically have two, it's on page nine of your book. Overview of our goals is the first and primary goal is 100% participation. We're wanting everybody to be involved. Didn't you love the video of the kids? 
This is the kids being involved, students. We want you to give on your own, not coattailing off your parents. You given on your own to be able to give. We want senior adults to give. We want widows to give, widowers to give. We want uh, uh, students to give. We want all sorts of families to give. We want the digital family to give. We want everybody, it's 100% involvement. Every one of us jumping in saying 100% participation. That's our first and primary goal. Our second goal is that we would be able to raise these resources of commission and community and compassion. But I want you to get that right in your mind. The first goal is the heart. David says in verse, uh, verse 20, he says, and the whole assembly, 100% participation is biblical. Christianity is not a spectator sport for somebody else. Christianity is the participants that know Jesus jumping in. If you were to take this whole assembly, just in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 29, verse one, it says whole assembly. Verse 10, it says whole assembly. Verse 20, I showed you, says whole assembly twice. So four times in one chapter, 100% participation. And I've been drawing illustration of this as we've been going through our time together of all the different folks that are jumping in because you know there's the widow's two mites and there's the millionaire's millions. But to be able to have all of us jump in with our best of whatever it is that God has for us. I showed you when we first started this series, uh, I gave you a, a picture and we'll put it back up of a prisoner that sent a check to the church. The prisoner is tithing off his, his, what he's made in prison. Texas Department of Criminal Justice Inmate Trust Fund. I'd not seen a check like this before. First Baptist Church, I said, Pastor, you gotta see this. A check for $9 given to the church came with this note. Dear First Baptist, I'm not a member of your church, but I do love Christ and I realize how far he has brought me. Please accept my tithes and my obedience. We had helped him in our prison ministry. And so he said, I wanna give my tithe that. $9 tithe. Blessing in the eyes of the Lord. The second thing I showed you is that there was a homeless lady that we were able to help. She gave a couple weeks ago, $2 cash. $2 cash she gave to the church. Flip it on the back and you'll see that she wrote a note, homeless and trusting the Lord to provide like only you can. Keep me or help me to keep my eyes on the one true God, not on my problems in Jesus' name as you provide and still in me a desire to give to you freely, Lord. Do you see that? $9 from a prisoner, $2 from a homeless lady. They're giving their best. Now, $9 and $2 probably isn't your best, but you can see the heart behind that. Then I showed you last week something really special to me, a commitment card that we found going through my wife's grandmother's stuff. She's passed away, died at 102 years old last year. And this is her husband's commitment card. Robert E. Mitchell, this is my wife's grandfather. He gave in 1921, you see up to the right, 1921, $12.50. Look on the back. till he finally paid it in full five years later, right before the Great Depression takes place. He's a kid at this time, parents. He's giving of his possessions to the Lord, being able to do this. Now, what I love about this card, I love that my son found this card. I love that my son saw a hundred year legacy of generosity to the work of the Lord. So when our family puts our card today into the plate, it's like this for us in our minds, that we're a part of a legacy. I love that my son found that, that he's a part of a hundred year legacy. And I just don't know if you feel like I feel, but he gave this to me, he said, dad, I think you're really gonna like this. I think it's of the Lord that 100 years later, 1921 to 2021, as we're in the middle of Kynos, this card was found. I think God's in that. So the first thing about partying is this mutual sacrifice of the whole assembly, prisoner, homeless, grandfather, kid, student, mom, dad, whatever it is, it's saying, Lord, we want to do that. We showed you in the video, 100% participation, those kids, I asked them if I could just have the box that the kids at the Loop Campus were putting their Kynos gifts into. How amazing. They were talking about time and resources that they were doing. So money, of course, with kids is great, but there's other ways to give for kids as well. So one card said, book drive for the less privileged children, a bake sale, helping our school librarian to shelve books. Man, way to go. If we're wanting the world to change, it's gotta start here. 
We can't keep throwing our hands up going, oh, the world's a mess, the world's a mess. The world's a mess because we're not teaching our kids there's somebody else in the world besides them. There's kainos. There's a new thought that the world does not revolve around you. And then God can do something with us. So let's 100% participation, not wallflowers at a Christian party, but I'm in God. I'm in. That's why it says the whole assembly twice. Number two, be reverent and kneel low. Be reverent and kneel low. Now, when it says that, it says it there, if you look at the end of verse 20, they knelt low and paid homage to the Lord and King. Verse 14, as you get their humility, it says, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give this generously to you? So we don't come in pride and say, oh Lord, I got it. We come on a bended knee and say, Lord, you've given me so much, God. I'm grateful to be a part of your kingdom. More than my kingdom, more than my stuff, Lord. It's, it's freeing the grasp on my heart, Lord. And I wanna give it to you, God. And I give it to you and say, Lord Jesus, this is yours. And I commit my life to you and my heart to you. And I want to be reverent and kneel low. And let me tell you what, that's something that's pretty lost on our Christianity today. And I'll tell you why. We're so afraid as the church, and we can fall in this too. We're so afraid of people being bored that will never get humble. It's always gotta be pop and fizz. Talked to our counseling director, Adam Mason. And he said, yeah, we just finished an amazing conference. It was on confession and lamenting. And I went, wow, those are two words you don't hear much in Christianity anymore. But there's something about getting low before the Lord where you realize he's God and I'm not. And so I'm, it's all his anyway. And so I'm gonna party by being humble. I'm gonna be partying by saying, Lord, I give it to you. And we need that reverence and we need that lowness and we need that confession and lamenting deeply in our heart. Now, it doesn't always happen in big groups. Most of the time it happens actually small, but it can as well that we just are reverent before God. Number three, be excited for the future of our church. How are we gonna party? We're gonna be excited for the future of our church. There it says in verse 21, they offered sacrifices, willingly they gave these things and they offer sacrifices to the Lord. I hope you are excited about what God's gonna do. Do you know that we're gonna get to be a part of some incredible things that God's gonna do? We're all gonna come together, 100% participation, to say we're all in and we're going for it. We've been using this generosity staircase to give us some places of excitement of how are we gonna do this? And there's many of us, hundreds of us, that we've never really given like in a real way. Yeah, $20 here if the video made us cry, but I, I mean, not really put our name on it, make a commitment, make a step. And so here we are, we're standing here with debt, we're standing here with doubt, we're standing here with uh, defensiveness. We're saying, well, I got a kid in college. Uh, well, I got a family to feed. Uh, well, I got a mortgage payment. Well, you know what? I got all three of those too. And to be able to say, I wanna take an initial step and I wanna take that step. And this is an exciting step. This is a discipleship step that you step and you say, Lord, thank you. Initially, I'm jumping in, I'm going for it. And this one is a hard one. If this is your first step, Go for it, trust God with it. Don't let doubt, don't let debt, don't let defensiveness. There's a thousand excuses and there always will be, but take that step of that initial time. And then you take that next step. There's some of us that we need to move to the intentional and you're like intentional now. It's first fruits, it's first, uh, first pay, uh, paycheck on the first and the 15th. It's the first thing that the Lord gets. You're intentional about your percentage. You're intentional about your giving. Many of you, you've heard messages like this your entire life and somewhere you got off track. And this is a new moment, a kainos moment for you to honor the Lord and to get intentional again. Hey, we're intentional about our visa bill. We're intentional about our cell phone contracts. We're intentional about our mortgages. We're intentional about our rent. We're intentional about our car payments. But we step here and we say, well, I don't really know. My life's kind of a mess. Well, your life might be in a mess because you don't have God first. And take this step and get intentional about it. And then the next step is a surrendered giver that giving 
is the first thing, not, not in the first fruits way, but giving drives everything else. Instead of our house driving everything else, instead of our car driving everything else, instead of our vacations driving everything else, we give and our giving is the greatest thing we could do and that drives everything else. And then the next step could be a lifetime giver. But this is just something you just know, your kids know, your kids' kids are gonna know. It's a part of your will, it's a part of your estate, it's a part of your lifetime. It is totally yours to say, Lord, it's yours. Now, if we were to give, we could, we could do 10 more steps up here. It's in like this is the end of the deal. But take the next step. What's your next step? Simply take the next step. And when we have 100% participation, we can get excited about people's lives changing as they take these next steps and watch our hearts grow. Our hearts are gonna grow in Christ right now today as we take these next steps and say, Lord, Let's go for it. So I hope you're excited about the future of our church. I hope you're excited about what things have gone on. You know, all through this COVID stuff, the church, not just our church, the church, we've been playing defense for like two years. Hey guys, it's time to move forward again as a church. It's time to go for it. God's not dead. God's not worried about anything. God is God and He is on the move and He's changing lives and we get to be a part of it. Let's be excited about the things that are happening. Even here at our campus of a men's event, women's event, the story that we're gonna do at Christmas to invite people to come and to hear uh, from, from all different folks in our choir and orchestra in a Christmassy way. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome thing. Number four out of five, generosity brings joy. They feasted after the giving. Generosity brings joy. Generosity is something God wants for you, not from you. And it brings joy. It's a blessing. It's time to party. It's exciting. It's wonderful. This is the greatest thing we could be a part of. What a blessing. What a joy. Look in verse 21 and 22, and I wanna show it to you in the scriptures, okay? Verse 21, the following day they offered sacrifices. So everybody's sacrificing, everybody's giving to the Lord and burnt offerings to the Lord. Now it's an agrarian society, so hear what they're giving. A thousand bulls, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs. That was costly to them. Along with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance, for all Israel, sacrifices in abundance. They gave their best. Now, verse 22, this is my point, that they feasted after their giving and they ate and drank with great joy in the Lord's presence that day. Generosity brings joy. They feasted after the giving. Now we think when we're gonna give, no, oh, now, now I don't have enough. They feasted after they gave. Let me tell you what, the joy comes. Stolen bread is not sweet or it's sweet to the taste, but it turns gravel to your mouth. It's not, but when you've given to the Lord, now the meal and the drink and everything, now there's joy because it's first his kingdom and righteousness, then all these other things shall be added unto you. So I want you to hear they're eating and drinking and feasting after they gave. And we think it's some kind of vow of poverty. I don't know, and now I'm not gonna have and blah, 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 blah. There's a feast of joy that happens. I told you about the homeless lady with the envelope. I showed it to you. She gave $2. After I gave that illustration a couple of weeks ago, she came down front and she said, Pastor, that was me. I'm the homeless lady. I'm living in a tent downtown. I gave her a big hug. I said, can I pray for you? And she said, sure. And so we prayed together and had a little group. We all got around and prayed for her. She's been coming every week. Today, an hour ago, one hour ago, she came down front and was standing down front. She said, Pastor, I got a job. Amen. I start this week. <laughs> There's another church member there. And I said to my friend, church member, I said, would you pray for her? And he just, I mean, tears well in his eyes and he just started encouraging her. I want you to know God's gonna take care of you. Thank you for being a part of our church. You're always welcome here. That was across racial lines. That was across socioeconomic lines. That was across gender lines. That's the church. And tell me she doesn't feel like she's feasting. She's given $2 to the Lord and now she's gonna start a job this week. What a great, great blessing that is. Does it always work like that? No, it doesn't. But does it work like that? Yes, it does. And so there's great feasting 
after the giving. You know, the Bible is filled with ironies. Are we mature enough to live in the ironies of the kingdom of God? Irony, to find your life, you gotta lose it. Irony, when I'm weak, I'm strong. Irony, it's better to give than to receive. Irony, it's better to serve than to be served. The whole Beatitudes in Matthew 5, what is that? Just a list of ironies. Humility is our strength, the greatest irony of all times. Christ who was rich became poor on our behalf so we who were poor could become rich in the Lord Jesus Christ. Filled with ironies, and I don't know how it works, I just know that it does work. Generosity brings joy and feasting comes after the giving. That's how you party as a believer in Christ. And number five, and finally it ends that, that, that scripture in verse 22. They ate and drank with great joy, that was what I just told you, where? In the Lord's presence that day. Always remember true joy is in His presence. Always remember true joy is in His presence. Here's what some of us are doing. I've been thinking about this phrase all week long. I want you to hear me. Instead of in living in His presence, we want to just live in His proximity. God, I'm gonna do my own thing I just want you close by in case I need you. There's a difference in having God live in your proximity, just keep him close in case something happens, in case the doctor says that that test didn't come out good, just stay by, Lord. If I get in a bad spot, I'm gonna need you. I want your proximity, but I don't wanna live in your presence. And I'm telling you the still small voice of his presence is where true joy is found. Psalm 16, verse 11 puts it like this. And you will make known to me the path of life. And in your presence is the fullness of joy. And in your hand are eternal pleasures forever. Jude chapter 24, it says that we live in your, stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy. Psalm 51 Verse 10 and 11, that's what David wrote. And that's who we're talking about here in this passage of scripture. He says, do not take your presence from me. Exodus chapter 33, Moses says, or God says to Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses says, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't send us from this spot. When you find God's heart, you find God's hand. So church, what we need is to live in the presence of God humbly bowed low, celebrating with 100% participation, feasting upon the ironies of God. That's different than, hey God, hang right here and if I need you, I'll be back. That's proximity. Live in presence. A.W. Tozer said, nothing in or of this world measures up to the simple pleasures of experiencing the presence of God. Brother Lawrence, old monk said this, the most holy and important practice in the spiritual life is the presence of God. That is every moment to take great, great pleasure that God is with you. On every step of the ladder or the staircase, he's with me, he's with me, he's with me, he's with me, he's with me. And one day I'm gonna be with him. And I'm just continuing the journey up and to allow him to do what he wants in me. Why? Because it's his to begin with, whether I'm a prisoner, whether I'm a kid, whether I'm an adult, whether I'm a millionaire, billionaire, or I'm a homeless lady, it's all God. So I'm not gonna grab it and say, my lemonade, you can't have a sip. Instead, I'm gonna say, Lord, I want my life to be a hundred years of legacy for my family, of the generosity of God doing his work. Hey, thanks for watching. To find out more about Houston's First, you can subscribe to our channel or you can go to houstonsfirst.org.